Hey there fellow creators, Ben here from Centerblock Studios, and about 10 years ago I switched from using the larger paint tube to the smaller paint tube. And what's funny is the smaller ones actually last me longer now than they used to. So here are five tips to extend the volume of your paint and use less of it over time. So while I do definitely still have at least my yellow in the big five ounce tube, and a couple other colors like my white and my black are in jars. I use a lot of that. The vast majority of my other colors I exclusively only buy in the two ounce small tubes. And what's funny about this is actually, well, this particular tube of quinacridone magenta, I actually just recently restocked this after I think almost two years. So it's like, how do I take a tube like this and make it last that long? Now, before I get started with the tips, there is a factor to this that affects all of these things but it's not one of the tips. And that is the uh, sort of the texture of your canvas, how smooth, how rough it is. Now, most sort of standard canvases are what they call medium texture. Uh, if you're using a smoother texture uh, canvas, this won't be as much of an issue or wood or anything that's a lot you know, smoother. And it's the fact that that first layer, because of the texture of the canvas, is going to require more paint. Uh, it is still somewhat true for a smoother canvas because it, it has to absorb in. Uh, at least to some degree, regardless of whatever gesso you've applied or was pre-applied. But it's really important to note that the first few layers you put into a painting are going to need a bit more paint. Uh, so for those layers, I actually use usually either very different colors than what I want those top coats, top layers to be versus um, going straight in with the color that I know it will be by the time I sign my name. Okay, that said, let's get into these five tips. The first way to sort of extend your paint volume is to use things other than paint. So I've got all sorts of gels and different pastes and certain painting mediums and things like that. Now, granted, when you buy these, they're an investment, but you're not going to be using them in every piece, more than likely. Uh, chances are, it's like, well, I need just a little bit of color, but I don't need it to be opaque. I, I'm okay with it being transparent. So a little, little tiny blob of color, and then flesh that out with some medium, some gel, some paste, some other things that will accept the color, extend that color out. So a little blob of paint, a little bit more uh, gel, so you create a lot more color without using a lot of color out of the tube. The second of these is something that, in addition to buying all the gels and pastes and everything, that I learned to do as I was doing that. Uh, a lot of times when I was painting, I had a lot of leftover paint on my palette when I was done, signed my name, and I'm like, well, I got all this paint now, and it's just gonna sit here and dry on my palette. Or, you can get yourself some empty jars. Now, I use my old uh, medium and, and paste jars uh, because they're kind of the right size for that. Uh, and I scrape off my palette when I'm done and just dump all of that paint into one of these jars. Now, I have multiple of these. All of them are sort of a nasty gray color, and that nasty gray color is great for that first initial layer of paint on the canvas. So I'll take this initial base color, uh, tint it one way or the other with other colors, so I'll add like a white or a black to, to change the, 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 uh, the value of it, uh, and then go into the piece and use this as the base layer. So I'm wasting the, the old paint and not wasting the good new paint. I actually have several of these. I have uh, used paint 2.0, the original used paint. Uh, used paint no white, so it makes more of a brown than a gray. I have used paint medium, so it's like all of the gels and paste mixed together to make something that looks a whole hell of a lot like cement. And then white only, so white with maybe a little bit hint of like blue or a little hint of yellow in it, so it's a really interesting off-white, but still primarily just white. So I'm like, I need white, but I don't need it to be pure white from this jar, so I can get it out of this jar. And considering I've been doing this for a while with the used paint, this is a whole lot of extra paint. I mean, these are what, five ounce? These are eight ounce jars, 237 mils. None of them are completely full, but that is a lot of extra paint and a lot of extra money that I don't have to then spend on more paint. And again, if you don't have any of those jars, just go to the dollar store, get yourself some jars. The third factor is something that I talk about all the time on this channel, and it's buy Good paint, uh, seriously, uh, an artist or a professional grade paint. So, you know, we're talking Utrecht, Blix, uh, Golden, 
Liquitex, Winsor & Newton, M. Graham, something of quality. Uh, I used um, De La Roni System 3 for a while, especially when I very first started painting because I was banking paintings and I needed paint. I, was, I said to my mom, I need paint. She's like, here, cheap paint. Uh, for that very reason, it allows you to crank out work. But the problem with a cheap student grade paint is you tend to need a lot more of it to either uh, cover lines up because it tends to be transparent where it shouldn't be. So a color like a, uh, a yellow, actually a, yellow, a lot of yellows tend to be more transparent anyway. But titanium white shouldn't be transparent. Black shouldn't be transparent. Uh, like Mars or Ivy Black should be very opaque. And a lot of student grade paints, you spread them on the canvas and they're transparent because the pigment load and the quality is terrible. So you buy good paint, you need, and as a result, you end up needing to use a whole lot less of it to do the same job that you would with, with two, three, four, five times the amount of paint on a lower grade paint. Viscosity can make a big difference too on coverage, uh, which is why I have a lot of like high flows and liquid things floating around because if you need, if you need to cover more space, you know, that makes a difference too, but that's a quality issue too. You're not, prob you're probably not finding a good high quality ink like acrylic that's student grade. The fourth factor is something that you guys see in the studio all the time. It's my color charts. They're everywhere. Uh, and the reason why they're on display is so I don't have to think about color mixing. I mean, I still do. And this color makes, makes that color. And there's things you learn over time, but having these. So for example, this is a watercolor map up here. And I have the perfect mixes, one to the other. Uh, so like business painted at yellow, there's, and, and the diagonal going across is all of those exact same pure pigment colors. And there's two of every mix on there because it's a square chart. But I can go, ooh, I really like this color. I want to use this for my painting. What do I need to make, mix that? Bohemian Green Earth and business painted at yellow. Now I've got a exact mix. I can pull those colors off and I don't have to think about it. So I'm not like taking some of this color and some of this color and like, oh, did, oh, that's not right. Now I gotta lean it this way. Some of this one, nope, it, 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 it didn't make that color either. So if you have the pre-mixes already done, you don't have to think about it and you don't have to waste the paint trying to get that color right. You can just go, oh yeah, this one and that one, got it. And the fifth and final factor is actually something that I gotta be honest, it took me a while to even come up with this one because it's so natural for me, I didn't even think about it. And that's mix as you go. Uh, a lot of people, especially if you're like an oil painter coming into acrylic, uh, you'll wanna mix all your paint right, right away. So you have a big pile of paint, and by the time you get to that whole pile of paint, it's starting to dry, if not is already dry. So I put a little blob of paint out on my uh, palette and mix up the color I need for that particular section. Uh, so I'm doing a blue sky. I'll have a pile of blue, pile, pile of a white, and I'll build on them. By the time I get to the baseland, then I will put that color on my palette, not until that I'm at that section. And even as I'm working, mixing grass, stuff like that, I'll do little blobs at a time. Uh, even on a relatively big canvas too, I'm not gonna mix a giant pile of paint because it's gonna dry by the time I get there. Now, if you're working with oils, totally pre-mix your paint. You can, you have totally the, the ability to do that. But I would say with oils, you can lay all your colors out, but just spend like 20 minutes mixing your colors. Get everything ready and then go into the piece. If you're using acrylics or you know watercolors, something that dries relatively quickly, just work as you go. So as I mentioned in the beginning, I don't use paint as much as I used to, but I actually do make a, probably a decent amount more paintings than I did even 10 years ago. I mean, I was still cranking them out, but while my general process has slowed, I'm making larger paintings. I'm making pieces that are a lot more complex. And as a result, I'm actually using less paint because I'm doing these different uh, techniques and tricks because I know I don't need a ton of paint to get out the idea I, I wanna do. Now, of course, if you're doing heavy impasto work, if you're painting literally every single day, these tips, well, will help your process. You're still not gonna make one of these last a year if you're painting literally that much. I paint on the weekends, sometimes on the weekdays. So a tube, a simple two ounce or 59 mil tube will last me the year uh, because I can space things out. I know how to use different paint mediums and things like that. 
So a little blob of color for me really goes a long way. And I hope for, from these tips, that little blob of color will help you go a lot further as well. So I am quite curious what you guys have to say about this. Um, have I mentioned anything that you already do and probably don't think about? Or have I opened your eyes and blown your mind into things like, oh man, how did I never think of that? Or maybe I completely forgot something or missed something entirely. If you've got questions or have another tip to share, drop them in comments below. As always though, if you enjoyed this or learned something, go ahead and hit that like button to help the channel out. Get subscribed if you're not already. Check me out in the strip. Social links, including the community discord, in the description box below. Totally flubbed that. Uh, this is Ben from Center Vlog Studios reminding you to keep on creating, and I will see you guys next time.